Good day, everyone. We are the group that is assigned to tackle about the module 8, which is photo imaging and post processing. But before I start, let me give you an overview of our report. Opening a Photoshop for the first time is like cracking open a fantasy novel that opens up an entirely new world of strange features, opposite natural laws and completely new languages. That new fantasy world is bursting with exciting possibilities yet budged down by so many unknowns. Of course, I'm going to give you the objectives which are to end the, at the end of the discussion or lesson, the student should be able to define photography terms and effects each adjustment has on the image, make basic photo edits and keep image quality, learn the workflow of pro post-processing. And of course, we have photography since it is consists of photo imaging. Photography is an art form like drawing and painting. Photographers use their camera to make us see life in a different way, feel emotions and record stories and events. And fun fact that the world's first photograph is made in 1826 by Joseph Nazefor. And here is the exact image that was taken. There are three basic types of photography, which are landscape, portrait, and documentary. Landscape photography. Landscape photograph is an environment, it is it could be the forest, mountains, oceans, or backyard. Landscape photography is a photograph of outdoors, just like the example on the right side of the screen. It is consists of the nature. Portrait photography. A portrait photograph is a picture of a person or an animal that shows an emotional connection. Documentary photography. Documentary photography tells us a story without changing the facts. It can be a portrait or a landscape. Remember that the good that a good documentary photograph photograph makes you wonder the story behind the picture, just like in the example on the right side of the screen. Camera exposure. An exposure is measured on how bright a photo is as it's saved in your memory card, sometimes referred as a finished image. Exposure is affected by four things which are light, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Lighting. Lighting is an essential ingredient of a photo, one of the skills that separates from photographers from snap shutters is the ability to solve lighting problems. There are two primary factors to consider from lighting, which are direction and con color. Lighting direction. Direction the light comes from can make the image seem flat or three-dimensional. From lighting, it is easy Front lighting is easy to photograph, but the image will generally flat. Top lighting, such as from the sun overhead, also makes an image flat and shadows are short and dark. Side lighting will emphasize texture and colors and create long shadows. Here in the side of the, of the screen, you can see the four images and took from different lighting. Took in different lightings and you can see how the lighting can affect an image so let so hello everyone uh, my name is Christopher Jimenez and I'll be reporting about lighting color so lighting color the color of light is measured by temperature in Kelvin which is K and natural light changes through the day and humans respond psychologically two different colors. So as you can see here in the screen, 
the warmer lighting and the cool lighting. So the white balance here of the warm lighting is so low that it becomes more warm. And while the cool lighting was, uh, the white balance here is too high, it would, you can see the infrared here in the photograph. So light, so as you can see here, in the other slide, uh, when taking a photo with digital camera, the white balance setting of a camera will affect the color cast of the image. So as what I've said earlier, the white balance here will be uh will affect the picture or the portrait you have taken there is flash or midday tungsten or sunny fluorescent and cloudy so as you can see here in tungsten the white balance here is too low that the picture itself the portrait itself will become like this while the well while if you're uh taking your uh, white balance in high or mid tone, it becomes like cloudy, fluorescent, or midday. So shutter speed. Shutter speed or speed photography is the length of time that the film or digital sensor in, inside the camera is exposed to light taking a photograph. So in shutter speed, as you can see here, you the photo takes here is about a, a few seconds so to in order to uh, capture this image the there's a blocking uh, a block there in the camera so that the light will go through it so when you, the when the light enters the camera lens it will go through and then there's a a barrier there that uh, that the light won't enter so that it can capture that image so there's a timing there so the seconds that the second you the second you take that picture it will allow the light to enter that particular particular area then it will shut it so that the picture will be taken So shutter speed can have a dramatic impact on the appearance and quality of photographs, especially when moving objects are involved. So as what I've said earlier, uh, the shutter speed is a uh, more on a timing. So because the sens the sensor of the camera will indicate the picture, will indicate the light in order to take that picture, as you can see there in the photo. So for instance, a slow shutter speed often results in a blurred image. Be <clears throat> well, in photography, when you uh, take a picture, the image will become blurred due to slow shutter speed. It's because the light enters it so, so long that the what you call this the barrier with has the timing very slow so it's just like this so when it it enters the camera with if you're you have a fast shutter speed it becomes like this so the image will become blurred so as you can see here shutter speed dial of a necromat el well it depends on the camera well, this is the shutter speed here. These numbers it represents the timing, the the digital uh sensory here, so that you can uh take an image just like this. A slow shutter speed combined with panning, as what I've said earlier, the camera can achieve the motion blur for moving objects such as uh, vehicle vehicles so in taking this vehicle running around let's just say about 50 to 60 kilometers you should have at least uh, your shutter speed will be moved here in 15 i guess or 4 
because the moving object is so fast that you need to uh, take it uh, very fast. So next is aperture. Aperture, it is the size of the hole in the diaphragm that allows light at the camera. So it's more on focus. So aperture does, uh, so aperture does not does more than just control the amount of light that hits the sensor. The size of the aperture affects the way an image looks well. So as you can see here, this is the diaphragm of the camera. So the bigger the hole, the more light will enter then the smaller the hole the smaller light will enter the camera so as you can see here in the diagram the av controls the amount of depth of field in an image the wider the aperture the shallower the depth of field and vice versa so if you make the the hole in the diaphragm bigger you only focus in a small area and the background will become blurred. Well, if the whole of that uh, diaphragm will um, that is uh, smaller, as you can see here, there is a small chance of being the background will be blurred and you can focus on wider depth or depth of field. So what is ISO? ISO originally referred to the sensitivity of film, its light gathering ability. So the higher the ISO rating, the greater the film's ability to capture images taken in low light. High ISO film was called fast film in the, it required a shorter exposure than a low ISO film. So the ISO setting is one of the three elements used to control exposure. The other two are uh, f-stop f or the aperture or focus and shutter speed. In most cases, manual setting, the f-stop and shutter speed or using one of the camera's automatic exposure controls is all you'll need to do. So you have to combine those three in order to make a wonderful portrait or landscape if you would like because the these three elements is very crucial in photography and post processing so as you can see here in the diagram this is the iso aperture and shutter speed so the iso iso is the more noise that you get the more light you have then the less noise the less light you have so in aperture the bigger the hole the more light will get in and the the more blurry your background is well the well the more depth well, the smaller hole, hole you get here in the aperture, the less light you get. So meaning to say you have a more focus on your picture. So in shutter speed, as you can see here, 1 is the 8. 1 over 80 is here, eight, the 8 here is the seconds you get in order to capture the uh the moving object so more motion blur you get the more light then the less motion blur the less light you will have okay so thank you for that mr jimenez and now let's talk about the top 10 tips in taking great pictures so the first one is get down on their level hold your camera at the subject eye level to capture the the power of those magnetic gazes and mesmerizing smells the second one is use use a plain background before taking the picture check the area behind your subject look out for threes or poles sprouting from your subject 
subject head. A cluttered background will be distracting while a plain background will emphasize your subject. So for the second one, or the second tip, is you'll have to look for a plain background and avoid strong patterns or clutter behind your subject. If what's behind your subject is visually imposing, it will distract attention from your subject. The third one is use flash outdoors. Even the outdoors use, use the fill flash setting on the camera to improve your pictures. Use it in a bright sunlight to lighten dark shadows under the eyes and nose, especially when the sun is directly overhead or behind your subject. Use it in, on cloudy days or brighten up to brighten up faces and make them stand out from 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 the background. So for the third one is you can fill these shadows a little by adding some flat lights directly from the camera to make them softer, especially when the sun is creating harsh shadow on your subject. Fourth tip, move in close. To create impactful pictures, move in close and fill your picture with the subject. Move a few steps closer or use the zoom until the subject feels the viewfinder. You will eliminate background and distracts distractions and show off the details in your subject for small object use the camera's macro or flower mode to to get sharp close-ups and the fifth one is take some vertical pictures many subjects look better in the vertical picture from the eiffel tower por portrait of your friends make a conscious effort to turn your camera sideways and take some vertical pictures and for the next tip lock the focus Lock the focus to create sharp picture of off-center subjects. First, first one is center the subject. The second one is press the shutter button halfway down. The third one is reframe your picture while still holding the shutter button. The fourth one is finish by pressing the shutter button all the way. So for the next tip, move it from the middle. Bring your picture to life simply by placing your subject off-center. Imagine a tic-tac-toe grid in your viewfinder. Now place your subject at one of the intersection of the lines. Since most of the cameras focus on whatever's in the middle, remember to lock the focus on your subject before reframing the shot. So for the eighth tip, know your flash range. Pictures taken beyond the maximum flash range will be too dark. For many cameras that's only 10 feet above, about 4 steps away, check your manual to be sure. If the subject is further than 10 feet from the camera, the picture may be too dark. And for the next tip, watch the light. Great light makes the great pictures. Study the effects of the light in your pictures. For people pictures, choose the soft lighting of of cloudy days avoid overhead sunlight that casts harsh shadows and across faces for scenic pictures use the long shadows and color of early and late daylight for the last tip be a picture director take an extra minute and become a picture director not just a passive picture taker add some props rearrange your subject or try a different viewpoint and now, let's talk about post-processing. Post-processing is a process of editing the data captured by camera while taking the photo to enhance the image. Better the data captured during clicking a photo, better is the enhancement possibility. There is more and more camera which have come into, into market which can capture raw files. Raw files have much more data at pixel level which and help in post-processing and enhancement the image. Post-processing can surely, surely help in enhancing the image but might not be able to convert a really bad exposure to excellent one. There are various of stages of post-processing based on what is the final result that one wants to achieve. So basically, post-processing helps to improve the quality 
of the images produced in the decoder of lossy image compression system and produce high compression ratios. However, they also discard information which is deemed not important. There are various stages of post-processing based on what is the final result that one wants to achieve. The first one is fine-tuning of raw file. Fine-tuning, so you're going to make some small adjustments to raw files in order to achieve the best performance. The second one is converting the raw file to easily readable form formats like JPEG, PNG, and TIFF. Editing, the third one is editing of JPEG to remove unwanted pic features. The fourth one is mixing of various files to, a to achieve creative result. And now let's talk about post-processing software. There are basically two things that are done in post-processing. The first one is an algorithm is, in, is run on all existing data of pixel and minor changes are applied to pixel data. The second one is manually selecting and replacing the pixel data with total new data. There is software by camera manufacturers, specialist software and software ben vendors, and there are also freeware and free software available for taking care of post-processing needs. Raw file handling and conversion is possible in raw therapy. UFR, UFRAW, Darkable, Adobe, Adobe Lightroom, Adobe Camera Raw, FS Viewer, and many more. G JPEG file editing is generally, generally done in image editors that have various features such as grain and red eye removal. Some actions that are may preferred but while editing raw file are the first one is exposure value adjustment. The second one is white balance adjustment. So for white balance, balance adjustment, it helps get the colors in photographs as accurate as possible. Third one is you and photographs as accurate as possible. Third one is you and tone adjustment. The fourth one is highlight and shadow recovery. For the fourth one, it will help you reclaim lost details in your photos or for creating eye-catching images. The fifth one is vibrance and saturation, saturation adjustment. The sixth or the last one is cropping and rotation. Some actions that can be done at RAW or JPEG stage are noise, reduction and sharpening some of the actions that are preferred after co conversion to jpeg files are red eye removal for red eye removal allows it allows you to make multiple adjustments to you color iris size glint and more and the second one is local local touch up of cloning to erase unwanted object in the frame the third one is adding a frame and the last one is mixing with other JPEG files. And for the short activity, number one, in your own words, explain the ISO, aperture, and the shutter speed. And why is it important for us to learn these things for capturing a photo? It is minimum of 150 words. And number two, number two, using your phone, make a portrait picture or take a portrait photo and explain the emotion in the photo. Thank you for listening until the end of the video and the group members as yours truly Oliver Jr. Soriano and Christopher Jimenez and Tella Ricofort.